All right, guys. Welcome, welcome to the Give It Podcast, a podcast for blurs, for nerds. If you have a fandom, you are most certainly welcome here. I'm your host, the most black Spartan. Of course, the man to my left, your right, actually has. Oh wow, you have nothing this week. What, what happened, Joe? We talked about. It. Still got tiny URL show. We got Joe. Yeah, but usually I'm 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 either a loss for words or you you usually get me with something. Advertisement uh, needs advertisement. Well, Here, I'll just judge you using the SPD license. You already judged me. I was already guilty. But anyway. Uh, no, we together, got off innocent that last one. Was I innocent? We got off innocent. Oh, cool. Uh, well, together we are the Gibbet Podcast, guys. Much like the WWE of old, um, we do have choice language, but nothing too vulgar. At the same time, there may be things that might My be My choice shown language is you. English. There it is. There you go. There, there, there <laughs> it is. And, then, and of course, there may be things that might be shown that might be too intense for younger viewers. So viewer discretion is advised aside from that welcome. So um, not a lot this week, but we do have a few things, uh, especially on the video game side of the world, because we're not that far off from the launch of Tekken 8. And uh, well, in, in, in Bandai fashion, they still keep giving us gifts. Much like the opening movie for Tekken 8. If you haven't seen it, well, this should be interesting. Coração ardente, mas cabeça fria. All right, guys. So that was the opening cinematics for Tekken 8. Of course, as you saw, uh, with season one, you will get Eddie Gordo um, as a playable character um, um, as the first pack going out. Why do they always give they always give the black guy the weirdest 
haircut slash locks look I've ever seen. Um, but Joe, any thoughts on the opening somatic, sir? So uh, this is probably the first time we've had an attract mode in I don't know how long. Also, the opening is very reminiscent of Tekken 5. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that is a big, big talk about in, in uh, a lot of the communities is why is everybody getting a Killmonger side dreads all of a sudden? It seems to be you... like the only hairstyle. And the odd thing is they show his um, concept art where he has like uh, dreads and like a, another ponytail of dreads on top of it, which looks so much better. Mm. Uh, Defari, you and Safari like, said, you and Safari said the same thing. You and Safari both said the same thing. The Killmonger swoop strikes again. Um, like, I am not black, clearly, but even I understand that uh, I can only choose the traditional Caesar or come over hairstyle so many times in a video game before it starts to become annoying, like literally right now. It seems like if you are a black video game character, you get the you killmonger have look. Only the killmonger. Like Miles Morales went from his standard faded buttons to uh -huh. the killmonger scoop in Spider Man 2. Yeah. I, I just, I, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm going to play Decadent when it comes out. But of all the hairstyles you can give Eddie Gordo. You, you I made a different the, choice for the games coming out next Friday. We'll look at that trailer in a moment. Oh, yeah, because I, I did see that. But that was the only thing, because, again, with Tekken 8 coming out next week, they also revealed uh, another character that will also be playable uh, come the 26th. is already decided. Sicilio è arrivato al limite. And as you can see, guys, that was the uh, Zafina reveal for that one. Um, apparently, she has a hand problem. Um, you gotta leave it at that. But, uh, Joe, any thoughts on that? Uh, she is holding back the power of the giant mega chicken from that one episode, from that one thing of chick, uh, Tekken. He was yeah. a, it was a chicken, I tell you, a giant chicken. Azazel's power, which is interesting, but um, it looks like Tekken 8 is going to be great, guys. Come January 26, you can still pre order it. Um, but again, uh, move right along, guys, to cover it like a dragon because I have not played Infinite Wealth, Joe has. I've only played the, um, the man who erased his name, which I love. Oh, you haven't played it. I'm sorry, it doesn't, it comes out the 26th as well. 
Sorry, forgot about that. I'm playing the man who erased his name right now. Oh, I love that. I love that like a dragon. That is fun to play. But uh, Infinite Wealth also comes out on the 26th. And if you're not sure what it's about, uh, Joe, any words when we get the trailer? Uh, this is in the English. Uh, this is the English dub trailer that got released a little bit ago. I will not be playing it in English. If they are all Japanese people, I will play it in Japanese. A good bit of Hawaiian people still speak both Hawaiian and Japanese. True. Uh, also, this will may also have uh, what is that game with the people with the island and the building of the houses and Tom Nook? Uh, Animal Farm? Yes. This has mm. Animal Crossing elements into it now. Because Yakuza 8 is but just a Dragon Quest game, if you don't understand it. Or Like Let's a Dragon see. is just Dragon Quest. Uh, with jobs, so many job variants, so many mini games. It is the only way you can play Virtual Fighter Five uh, now easier. Oh wow, Virtual Fighter Five! Anyway, here's the trailer for Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. <laughs> Lately, our old friend, the Siryu clan, has been acting mighty suspicious. It's a pleasure to meet you, Hasuga-san. I'm sending you to Hawaii. There's someone there who wants to meet you. It's your mother, Akane-san. What the hell's going on? Freeze. Cure you, son? High time you met the head of the Barracuda. Names Dwight. Barracudas are after me. Akane-san, they're after her too, you know. You seen this? This is someone else, Anja. You trying to tell me there are Yakuza in Hawaii? The head of Kazuma Kiryu. What better trophy than the head of a dragon? I really, really need your help, like right now. I'd take a bullet for a butt any day. <sighs> take cover! You can always turn a new leaf, but you can't turn back the clock. All you get is the precious time you're given. You ready for this, Kasuga? Let's do this. All right, guys. So that was the trailer for uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. I'm definitely playing it, but uh, Joe, anything you want to add to that? I like that we have a boss fight against Danny Trejo, who's named Dwight, but still attacks us with machetes. That I was going to point that out. Machete is in Yakuza. <laughs> That's still funny. Uh, but no, that looks like it's going to be fun. Also coming out on January 26th. Um, but the next thing, which I have to ask Joe about because I have yet to watch it, but the first couple of minutes for Garo look interesting as hell. So before I play this uh, trailer for, what's Garo about, uh, Joe? Jo? So Garo is a tokusatsu show, uh, but it is an adult tokusatsu show. Not that kind of adult. Don't get your mind in the nope. This is uh, done by Kita Emiya, who's a horror thing. I don't know if it's the same uh, Emiya son who does Resident Evil. Mm hmm. Uh, so it's about an order of knights that fight demons, and usually it's fairly bloody and whatnot. But since it's on adult, since it's on YouTube regularly, um, mm -hmm. this is coming out of ZOJ video games. Oh no, this is the same key to Emia. So, uh, he has done notable works, uh, Garo, all the Garos have been by him. Uh, mm -hmm. He also has done video games uh, such as designs for Clock Tower, Dual Heroes, Onimusha 2, Onimusha 3. Uh, he just does a lot of work. Uh, nice. He also did the, he was a director for uh, Mobile Cop Jiban and Jetman and Zoo Ranger. So we have Mighty Morphin Power Rangers to think uh, for Kita Emiya. But no, uh, in all things, this is a horror-based uh, tokusatsu involving magical knights, uh, all of which are kind of in a class system where Iron Knights are the lowest and the Golden Knight Garo is pretty much top tier and end-all, be-all. If he pulls the sword, the game is over. 
But uh, we are focusing this show, particular show on an Iron Knight. Gotcha. Also, the show is available on YouTube as of right now. Yes. I think you said Joe is two episodes now. Two episodes in. Okay. So in case you're wondering, here's the trailer. よく来てくれましたオーゴン騎士どうがいじゅうか私と暮らしてに来てくださいハメツの門が広くだと鎮守の光を与えるやみへと誘う力があると言われています俺たちの手で破壊しようやるしかないあそういう中止を貴様を
But the one thing that I was interested in was how Indiana Jones, uh, the Indiana Jones game was looking, considering the fact it's being made by Machine Games. It's also being led uh, by the by the producer of Fallout. And I'm going to be honest, for all those that haven't seen the trailer, I'm going to play this first, and I want your opinions of it. Here's Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Let me tell you what you are missing, Dr. Jones. While you were playing your pointless game, I was playing you. You're wondering if maybe you should have built yourself a life of meaning instead of ending up here, dead and forgotten in the sands of Africa. <laughs> Myths, history, just different ways to interpret the past. Thousands of years of humanity's thoughts and beliefs scattered and buried. Just waiting to be found. You can't just run away from your problems, Indiana. Watch me. Throughout history, Mankind has built sites of great spiritual significance. If you were to draw a line through these ancient sites around the globe, you get a perfectly aligned circle. I've had run-ins with these guys before. Trust me, it ain't a walk in the park. Okay, then. Let's see if you can keep up. What do you mean if I can keep up? <laughs> Patron of the fallen angels. Protector of the... Chukumani. The Great Circle. <laughs> you have any idea how old that was? And that, guys, was Indiana Jones in the Great Circle. That was the gameplay reveal trailer. Um, as of right now, no official uh, release date has been put forward. But, Joe, I'm going to start with you. Um, what'd you think? I mean, it's Xbox exclusive, so I won't get to play it. So, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is, uh, well, I'll just go play Nathan Drake in the corner with Laura Croft and I'll be happy. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll be able to shoot the same, about the same amount of Nazis as anybody else. I just won't have a whip or Harrison Ford. But... Just from a visual standpoint, do you think that it do you think it adds up to what we think an Indiana Jones game should be? I mean, sure. It's what I'm it's what most people want is young Indiana. I mean, no offense to the last couple of movies, but we're not really here for old Indiana Jones. We want young Indiana Jones. We want old K High Kwan. We don't want the kid going Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones. Throughout the whole thing. I'm Japanese, I get to do this, even though he's Chinese. No one can hurt. No one can punish me on this. Um, like, I, I'm there for it. It's absolutely brilliant. I love the fact that they're doing this. Uh, FPS Uncharted with the twist. It has potential. Yep. That man is correct. Um, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and chime in on my side. I love it. If, if this is what... If this is what... I expected this to be Uncharted with a whip. 
I'm okay with that. Uncharted, Uncharted was Indiana Jones before we had it. I can live with that. But the fact that they really are using the whip, they're focusing a lot more on puzzles because let's be honest, that's most of Indiana Jones movies were solving puzzles. Um, as far as the gameplay and the combat, it looks exactly how it should play. I'm digging it. I, I think that machine games may actually get this right. I'm wondering if it zooms out on third person on big dynamic moments because we did oh, see it, some third some third person moments too. Oh, and the in the developer they did mention that it does go from third person to first. So it does switch from third to first person whenever on um, on big on on uh big sequences, I should say. Okay, so you're all yeah, right. that's what Please. I that's what I kind of figured. No, like right. I said, this is great. I'm with Harrison Ford doing the voice work. Yeah. Uh, hands down, seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to it. It's, it's, I'm getting two things I've always wanted. I've always, I'm getting Black Myth Wukong. I'm definitely playing that game, and an Indiana Jones game. That I'm looking forward to, looking forward to it as well. But from the PS5 side, guys, um, we also did get a trailer for the next part of the Final Fantasy VII remake series. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And yes, if you're wondering, we're still wondering about that question. Here's the trailer. Sephiroth. What happened to this place? It was Sephiroth. It can't be. He wants to finish what he started and rule over the planet. You coming? Way ahead of ya! We have to help them! Let's get to work. You are truly a model soldier. People! We can handle this. I will reclaim our world. And as you can see, guys, that was the trailer for Rebirth. Um, will be available at the end of the month um, with exclusives, of course, the PS5 only. So, again, I have a goal in mind. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. The thing about it, I will say this, guys. Oh, what, you, what did Tafari say? It reminds me a bit of Dying Light, which was the first furly person, but they didn't actually render the MC in case. Yep, I remember that. And they're still in CD1 material, the OG game. They're going to milk this like Kingdom Hearts. I'm going to buy each one. I am the same freaking way. Um, so I'm going to argue that uh, they can't what? milk this like Kingdom Hearts 1 because it hasn't been 10 years between 1 and 2. Fair. Fair. You're right. that There is that little caveat. That is, it hasn't been 10 years. You're, that's kind of fair. That's kind of fair. But... I'm looking freaking forward to it. Now I will say this: as Final Fantasy fans, you saw what happened in Re you saw what happened in remake. There were some slight changes. Expect the same in Rebirth. That's all I'm going to sit there and say. Expect the freaking same. But so they are showing us stuff we know. Yeah. But you notice how we know that Zack's alive in the other timeline, but we haven't seen Jack squad about that side of the game? Pretty much. They're not going to show us anything about that side of the game. Of course They're not. only going to show us all the stuff we know about mm -hmm. the Golden Saucer and all that stuff uh, first, and then the other half of the game is going to be unknown to us. Because we got to remember, in this game, Sephiroth's plan is to undo everything he did, meaning he can't kill Eric. Because if he does, then the hope materia gets uh, taken out of her. Pretty much. So something's gonna happen before then. Oh, there's gonna be a twist somewhere. We know that there's a twist somewhere in in in, in rebirth, but we'll find out at the end of the month. Um, just as far as like just played Crisis Core for the first time in pain. You don't know yeah. what that's like unless you played actual Crisis Core on the PSP. Well, you got all well, you. He got all the uh, updates and uh, quality of life improvements of uh, Crisis Core on this revisit. We, I played yeah. the original. 
I kind of forgot about how the mechanics need to be updated heavily. You're oh wait, well he said that's what I played it on. He may he, okay, he played well, on he PS2. The pain. He understands. He understands the pain. Because I was gonna say if you played on PS2, does he understand you know, the pain of Dirge of Cerberus? I'll be skipped it. I skipped. That's one. That's the one Final Fantasy game I skipped completely was Dirge of Cerberus just because how bad it was. But again, guys, uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, will be coming out at the end of the month. January seems to be a very productive day for video games. Um, but Capcom has also decided that they're going to drop a trailer too, because as Joe has pointed out, he uh, you take a you taking a break from Street Fighter Six Online play for a while, right? Just a little right. bit. I go back every now and then. I'm waiting till uh, waiting till Ed drops to see what he's going to be like. Mostly also because I'm really tired of hearing everybody just like talk about Akuma. It's like. Yes, he will come out, mm -hmm. and you will still get throat loot by Ken, same way as everybody else does. And He'll Tafari, you're right. Man. Oh yeah, now also Tafari's right. The mid, uh, the Midgar Zolum fight, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be something else. No, it's in the trailer. It was that giant snake they were fighting for a hot second. Oh, it was. Oh, it looks slightly modified. Okay, so it was in the trailer. Um, that's gonna be interesting. But I'm glad you brought up Ed because. That's actually the teaser trailer for the next character in Street Fighter VI. Butter toast. The next stop is Beat Square. Beat Square Station. Bring it on. Again, and I'll punch a hole through you. And guys, that was the trailer for Ed. As you can see, guys, he will be available in February for Street Fighter VI. Uh, Joe, your first look at him, what do you think? Uh, he is probably going to come out at Capcom Cup. Uh, visual thoughts, I kind of agree with the FGC community. Kind of reminds me of Dante from mm -hmm. uh, DMC. I'm okay with that, too. Uh, if this trailer teases anything from his move list, he is going to um, have a dash in punch, uh, dash in and a dash out. Mm -hmm. We may have probably seen his level one or possibly his level two. He's got his grasper, which hopefully will have an easier time of uh, triggering. Because that was the one part about Ed I couldn't figure out is how to get that uh, yank back. Mm -hmm. mechanic on him because i think he was part of one of the v trigger abilities i could be wrong on that i only dabbled in ed uh but not for very long but this one i'll give him a shot because street fighter 6 is always fun regardless of what so many people like to say uh you guys it's like skill issue i mean mm -hmm. i've no one to talk i at least just don't complain i just learn it's like i lose i learn yeah, I don't cry about it. <laughs> but uh, what's the far say? The rage that came through when you realized you could just ran past the snake. Yeah, yeah. We all learn. We all learn some. We all learn somehow. The other um, interesting thing about that trailer that I noticed is that those are not mag gear grunts. Those guys have shadows insignias on their boxes. Right. So someone wants him badly because he is supposed to be a vessel for bison, but 
-hmm. his bison soul was destroyed in five. So what has he got that they want? Ed is here to help you forget about Suicide Squad. You, you know, Tafari, you bring, I mean, Tafari brings that up about Suicide Squad. And that's kind of what I'm going into next. Oh, um, yeah. Because for, yeah, for all those that don't know, there was a alpha test or a beta test, they call it. For a Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Now, again, the NDA has ended, which means that those that have actually played the beta can now give their opinions. So I'm just going to read a few um, because there's kind of a lot. Um, this guy says, realize they aren't going for superhero versus of Mila 2. Is that a word? Instead of making it a looter shooter, a third-person shooter with DC Comics flavor, Traversal really worked for me, and I felt rewarded for figuring out their systems. Found myself playing a lot just because it was falling the sticks. Um, another person said, better than expected, was very well polished. Only think I ran into one bug in several hours. Co-op worked well and didn't feel tackled on. Gear is really the only concern I had. All seemed kind of the same. Only had access to low-level stuff. Another individual played the story, remembered none. Play the gameplay, remember it being bad, movement was clunky, and the shooting wasn't very enjoyable either. And I'll read one more. The characters are great. The gameplay is fun in the short time I've played, but questions remain over how long it can hold people's attention and if the game will be able to avoid the same slip-ups that other live service games have had. That being said, um, with Kill the Justice League, because they are moving full steam ahead on this, because of the opinions of those that have played the beta, does it kind of make you want to play it? Or do you still feel like, no, nah, I can leave it? So I looked at some of the gameplay trailer, mm -hmm. and the first thing that came to my mind is, this will make a great Hulk Ultimate Destruction game. Damn. <laughs> it's just a big, big, giant city, and you were just running around. It was with uh, King Shark. Uh -huh. And I'm like... We just slot Hulk in instead, and I run around the city with uh, car boxing gloves mm -hmm. rather than play any of these characters and just run around fighting like uh, the uh, the Squadron Supreme. Yeah, and I just have Hulk fighting the Squadron Supreme instead. Um, you know the thing. The thing about and I, I hate to say this because. I like Rocksteady, and I think Kill the Justice League, I, I may be indifferent. I still want to give it a shot. I still want to give it a shot. I still want to see if it's worth playing just because, first off, we don't really get a lot of Suicide Squad games. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first attempt at a Suicide Squad game, isn't it? If I remember right. The standalone, maybe? Yeah, I think it's a, a, as far as a standalone Suicide Squad. I want to say this is the only one in existence. But if anybody knows differently, if anybody knows differently in the comments, please tell me because again, we want to be we want to be right. But because I believe it's the first one, that makes me want to try it. I mean, Rocksteady is usually pretty good about video games, and I know we've covered this. We've covered this in the past about Kill the Justice League. We covered the news about them going live service, then taking it away, then giving everybody guns, which we didn't understand concerning the fact of Boomerang and King Shark. I can understand Harley Quinn. I can understand Deadshot. But King Shark with a King Shark with a weapon just doesn't seem right concerning the fact that he is a weapon. And Captain Boomerang, literally in the name, has weapons. So... But I still want to give it a shot. Uh, what do you say, Tafari? The Warner Brother touch is so toxic. The rock steady heads knew the reputation is right and just started a whole new company. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but I don't know. I, I still want to give it a shot. Do I think it'll be? Do I think have they learned their lesson? Maybe. Is it worth the sixty dollars? Is it worth the sixty dollars to try it out? Probably not. That might be a game fly situation. I'm not gonna lie to you. But what are you going to say, Joe? My biggest worry is that this is not going to do well. Okay. And as a result, they are going to use this game. And the way to push sales through is, like, do you want to have Kevin Conroy's last uh, 
last vocal performance, this is the only way you're going to get it. Because remember, this is the last thing he voiced as Batman before passing away. That's true. That was his, that was his last and vocal. I don't call. want them to sully his name mm-hmm. by putting out a mediocre game and then pointing to his like, if you want Kevin Conroy, this is the only way to do it. I would hope that they don't, but you might, I mean, you're, you're probably right. They might try to, they might try to use that man's last performance as a cash grab. I hope they don't, but it's kind of leaning to, it's kind of leaning to because it's Warner Brothers. They just might. Yeah. Are they above it? Absolutely not. Like what they did with George Sears in the Flash movie. That is very, that is very true. Um, But I still want to give it a shot. Not, not the nearly $70 level. I, I just, I can't see myself spending $70 on a game that I'm probably going to be angry about. I'd rather game fly it or just wait till it becomes in another, in another form. But that's just me. But uh, speaking of other games though, this other game reminds me of Turok so much that I think that we'll never get another Turok game. Although I really think we should considering with today's graphics and whatnot. Um, but this next trailer that we have called Sun and Bone, again, I want you guys' opinions on it. I really do. But before I do that, um, so far, would you say I hope I'm wrong? But to say you want to continue the Arkiverse in a video game where you get to kill the heroes ain't a good selling point. I mean, I mean, you're right. If you got those that play as villains, I, I see your point on that. But you know, you do got some people out there that would want a whole Joker game. So there's that too. But I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm on the fence about it. I can't see myself spending full price on Kill the Justice League. I was at first, but like I said before, rather wait for a game fly or another situation for that to come up. But you're right. Not a good selling point if you're playing as the bad guys, but there's a niche for everybody. But before I play this trailer, Joe, anything else you want to add to it? No, nope, I'd rather have a Hulk game in this on this system. But yes, Sun and Bone. Again, this looks like Turok. It plays like Turok, but just under a different name. Check it out. Now, guys, that was the trailer for Sun and Bone. Um, like I said, looks like it plays like Turok, basically a man fighting against dinosaurs. I'm digging it for it to come to PS5. But, Joe, what do you think? Give us Dino Crisis, you cowards. They'll never give us Dino Crisis. Also, if it doesn't have the cerebral board, it doesn't count. That's, that's the thing. We... We will let, let's be honest, we will never get Dino Crisis as much as we should. Dino Crisis was a great game. Will we ever get a remake for it? Nope. I don't know why. I actually think at some point Capcom will just will do it because 
they'll run out of Resident Evils to remake and they won't have a choice. Eh, fair point, but they're gonna milk Resident Evil. And also, no offense, Resident Evil remake or four was great, two was great, three was great. Don't remake six, let six die. Six dot let five remake five. Five was great. Six no. was terrible. Five, I love five. Five was better than six. Remake Code Veronica first. They'll never remake Code Veronica. They they I'll literally did, five. No, no, they literally did Revelations before they did Code Veronica. That's saying a lot. They'll never remake five. They should. I mean, if you're gonna, I mean, you're heading that way. Oh, I'm not arguing if they should or shouldn't. Yeah. I'm just saying they're not going to because there are so many thematic problems with five nowadays versus then. Remember, they already had to change a little bit of five when five was being made because of some of the choices they went with. Because they did so much quick time events. I'm like, dude, not I'm talking about what the enemies look like. Well, I mean that, yeah, there was that little bit of a problem. There was that problem. Uh for all those. You forgot about that, didn't you? Yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about that side. The enemies in five were a little uh um what's the word I'm looking mildly right offensive now? to anybody today with anybody's sensibilities. Thank you. That's, like that's I said, they're not gonna touch five if they touch five, then they're gonna have to do some oh there's gonna really be some really big like overhauling and they're have to gonna get PC principal to help them. Oh yeah, there's gonna be some heavy remodeling if they do five, but so, but getting back to Sun and Bone, guys, like I said before, Turok is another game that we should have another game of. This is probably as close as we're going to get to it. Um, it looks great. It is going to be on PC, but also a PS5, because like we said, everything's next gen now. Everything is Xbox Series X and, P- and PC and PS5 and whatever Nintendo Switch is coming out later on down the pipe this year. We know that's coming. But At this point, everything is next gen, but Sun and Bone looks great. I have no complaints about it. I am, I'm adding that to my games to watch list that's coming out. Um, but you guys let us know in the comments what you thought about Sun and Bone. I guess so far, I thought it was great. Looks like it's gonna be worth playing. Another game, however, uh, we do have information about, uh, before we get to Ubisoft because Ubisoft's executives, um, need to be fired. But before we get to that bit of news. Stalker 2 Hard Chernobyl does have some news regarding its release date. And that right there, folks, is music to my ears. September 5th, 2024. Um, if you've ever played Stalker, uh, Stalker, it is a first-person shooter, a little bit on the horror side. Um, this is also Clive Bar- the, you know, the Clive Barker Stalker, uh, the one of the original PC shooter games. Loved it to death. I cannot wait for two because two is supposed to be basically a more amped up version of Stalker. If you play games like uh, like Metro, you're going to love Stalker because Metro, again, is one of my favorite series to play. Stalker's right up there with it. But that comes out September 5th, 2024. So a little, little while to wait because I know we just started. We just started 2024, and that's not going to be out until later on the year. But still, I can wait. Uh, but, Joe, anything about Stalker 2? Have you ever played Stalker 2? Stalker, Stalker 2? Never? No. You, Is that I, the one well, with vampires? No. No, that's, that's fear. Uh, that, that's fear. Stalker 2 is like... Um, Stalker 2 is Metro before it was Metro. So pretty much... Wow. Think of it like think of it like Fallout. Think of it like uh, Fallout Russia, but right out of a nuclear facility. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it to you that way. But... Before we get on, but before we get on, um, because I wanted to talk about this with you guys and Joe, because Ubisoft, I, I don't. Okay, let let me. I, I feel let me do this like first. this. 
I feel like the before we jump into this, I will preface this it. entire conversation of I don't feel like this is a company statement, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't hold the company accountable for this. I feel like this is one executive saying things he doesn't understand and just going for it or running at the mouth and not realizing yeah, something. I'm not trying to like say anything, but I feel like Ubisoft is catching a lot of flack for something mm -hmm. one idiot said, and I don't feel like that needs to be the case. And for all those that don't know what Joe is talking about, an Ubisoft executive literally said this, quote-unquote, one of the things we saw is that the gamers are used to a little bit like DVD having and owning their games. That's where the consumer shift needs to happen because he's pretty much saying to basically get comfortable with not owning your own games. Now, I agree with Joe to a certain extent that, yes, it was an executive that said this, it does not reflect on the company. The problem is, when I try to look this up, I don't see Ubisoft coming out there and saying, it's just him, it's not how we all feel. That's the one problem I have with this. If you're a company who, whose lifeblood depends on, the, depends on the fact that you need gamers to buy your games, you have one executive out there that turns around and says, gamers need to get comfortable with not owning your own games. Now, me and Joe have talked about this before, that physical media is under attack. It really is. Best Buy has stopped selling CDs and DVDs and things of that nature. Walmart has it. Walmart's actually picked up. But there is a over there is a underlying push for everything to go digital. Now, the problem is with digital. We saw this with PlayStation, where a lot of people that had bought certain things on the PlayStation Network, like Discovery episodes, for example, um, just not too long ago, they were told that the episodes and things that they purchased, they no longer, they don't have ownership to and could lose it. Now, of course, after a big outcry and a big outburst, Sony turned around and said, no, we're not. We're not doing it. It's not happening. You're good. You get, you, you're good to keep your stuff. But if you're like me and you're like Joe, where we like physical copies of everything, that is a kind of a warning shot that the industry is trying to shift to digital. And the thing about it is when you shift to digital, you a lot of things come up. Like, number one, if that's the case, the price of your game should not increase if you're going straight to digital because you're cut because a lot of it is a lot of it is distribution a lot of it is manufacturing and a lot of it's retail so if you cut if you're going straight to digital you're cutting out a big third of your process so why your game if that's the case your game should still not be 60 60 70 dollars i kind of argue against that i understand what you're saying and that makes mm -hmm. absolute sense mm -hmm. Uh, but we also got to keep in mind that production costs are growing mm -hmm. and amassing more and more with how difficult new console uh, things are, new technologies uh, to make games. Uh, we got to pay the actors. We got to pay the programmers. Costs mm -hmm. are rising above the board across the board. So, like, a AAA is going to be more and more expensive each and but every time. Like... What you're saying is absolutely true. That eliminates mm -hmm. a good chunk of the market, but mm -hmm. that market's value for production is always growing higher and higher to where even losing that physical side, it doesn't eliminate that cost entirely, I feel like, because of how PS5 games mm -hmm. take forever to make now. And, I mean, mm -hmm. let's look at Final Fantasy uh, Rebirth. That yeah. thing is so big. It's now going to take up two HD, uh, HD DVD, HD DVDs, right? HD, yeah, HD Blu-rays, right. HD Blu-rays, oh, HD Blu-rays. So, mm -hmm. just imagine what the production level cost on of a game of that level is. But at the same time, you can't price gouge your 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 demographics into now 
cutting back on what games they go for. Uh, but real quick, Safari, uh, movie out my Best Buy, now houses extra computer parts. I pre-ordered the deluxe of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and that's my last Best Buy purchase. Yeah. So, actually, guys, if you really pay attention, look at your Best Buys, mm -hmm. they have a lot of their physical media on, like, hardcore sale to get it out of there. So you can probably find some pretty decent stuff at a really decent price at yeah. the moment. So there's that. Also, back to the thing, we got to realize you and I are complaining about $70 games. When we were little, depending on what console and what system yeah, and still... what what name, you were yeah. still paying 120 for video games. Sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not arguing that. It's still it, it was so, still it was still 60 or 70 at our at, at a young age. We you're both right. were agreeing with everybody with what each other say is yeah. the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at it from a production cost. You're looking at an advertising mm -hmm. advertising uh side. But, but that's the but uh, but but my thing is you're going to it's almost to a point to where they think that they have enough digital gamers and not like us. We're physical. They do. Yeah, you are, I mean, they that, that's the thing. That's what they're betting on. Whereas you're kind of eliminating, I'm not going to say the older generation because some of the new generation likes physical copies too. But when you eliminate the idea of physical copies, you're, you are kind of sitting there giving us the middle finger. You really are. You're saying either go digital or get left behind. But we're not their primary people anymore. I mean, we got mm -hmm. three generations where iPads are basically books, uh, books and music players now. So yes. I mean, like for us, it's the retro, it's the nostalgia factor. For the younger mm -hmm. kids, it's the retro thing. But like in the grand scheme of things, the general audience for gamers nowadays. They don't. They're not. They don't have CD. They don't have CD towers don't know or CD uh, shelf space to put yeah. all their physical media. I but, can't get yeah. more books because I'm worried about the structural integrity of my floor caving in. <laughs> but the thing, but the thing is, though, it's just that when you're betting that much, and for a lot of us, I always point out the other side too. See, when you're going digital, I'm not saying it can happen. But the but the possibility is there. Like, for example, take uh, take your PlayStation Plus or your Xbox Game Pass. If you have games you've downloaded from those from those two systems, and let's just say you miss a you miss a subscription payment, you can be automatically locked out because it's looking it's it's looking for that acknowledgement that your subscription is still active. Yeah. Okay. Say put that in the same sense for digital purchases. That at that point, like for physical media, we own it. Like no matter what, internet internet sources or not, we can still play a game because we have to because we actually have the physical manifestation of it. Versus digital, my fear is they can always go and say, "Well," and I, and I say this as a fear. I'm not saying this as an actual thing. I'm saying this as a fear that the live service games that we love to hate may some where along the lines become the consoles of the future. And that's my fear. Yeah. But on the flip side of this, and we're just going to look at it from two different perspectives on this thing, but like mm -hmm. my also look about it is like after a while, you don't even realize it's gone unless it's something really, really impactful. Like we watch streaming shows almost every single day. Yeah. And the moment you finish something, unless it's hugely impactful on you you're mm -hmm. not returning to that anytime soon and that thing's taken off and taken off a streaming platform and you don't even notice you're on to the next thing that's a fair point it's, it's a fair no, point I mean, don't give me i don't get wrong it's fair like point. they shuffle it or they shuffle it around and you just got to find where it is next if you want to watch it again right but that the but that's the thing about media it's like either you Either you buy, like us in Tafari, because he did say the video I made about empty steel books. These damn tie pot eaters don't even realize anything was wrong. He did talk about the Disney collection. He did, he did, he did kind of have a point. The Disney Winter collection went from $30 to nine. Good lord, it's a very much get it at the fuck of our store sale. You ain't lying. Um, look, we've already had people ask us if we were born in the late 1900s. Yeah, we're old, we are old. Don't let don't let limited run games become the only physical distributor. Then we're doomed. That part, that's the part I can understand too. 
Um, but it's just like I said, it, it's the whole thing of again, Ubi not to get away from Ubisoft. Ubisoft should have actually let out a comment and said that's one person's opinion. That's not the opinion of the company. The fact that nothing has been said since then, that kind of screams volumes. Do we know which version of Ubisoft it is? Because at this point, it could just be that one studio who just like, just let him say what everyone sees an idiot. Ubisoft Canada? Well, there we go. It has it's... nothing Ubisoft Montreal? Okay. I mean, Ubisoft Montreal is usually pretty quiet. They don't usually say anything crazy from that side of the pond, but I could be wrong. But but no, it's just when you think about that and the fact that, you know, not to not to make it into a subject of itself, but when physical media is literally becoming a thing of the past, you can't help but guys of our age, our age and genres, we do get somehow worried. And we again it kind of validates the reason why we stockpile everything. What'd you say, Tafari? Ubisoft is in the office running around like SpongeBob when he forgot his name. Damn. <laughs> Also, to Furry's point, I wouldn't actually mind limited run games being a physical distributor. Mm-hmm. The only physical distributor, they give you some really nice add-ons. That is, that's another part, but it's the it's just the other side. That's the thing I worry about that much. But again, we have to see what happens. Maybe Ubisoft are just going to point this out and say, you know what, it's one executive that's no longer with us, or he doesn't reflect our views. Either way, it, it is quite concerning, but. That's the uh, that's really the news that we have, Joe. Do we have anything else before we get to comp pools? No, I mean, there's rumors that the new girl in Doctor Who may only be on for one season, but that's being run by the Mirror, and the Mirror is not the most well known, useful source of right. uh, credible information in the UK. I I mean, doc, this this season Doctor Who's going to be is going to be nice. That's all I can sit there and say, but. Again, I have to shout out to David Tennant and Neil Patrick Harris. Thank you for giving us a season, especially Neil Patrick Harris. Good Lord, bring that man back as another as another character. That's all I ask because he 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 stole the scene in that one. Uh, we say Safari LRG has their own higher up drama. Hence, why my Force Unleashed is two years late. Yep, yeah, that that is also true, but. I don't know. I don't know when it comes to certain things. It's just I don't get these video game companies outside of a few of them out there um, that just seem to get it right. Uh, but again, we digress. Uh, but Joe, that do see you have your comics up, sir. So uh, whenever you're ready. <sighs> Not the deep breath. All right, so we're on the comics tonight. Uh, we're starting off with Nightwing. If you guys don't understand the meme cover, please go look up Smudge Lord. He is an adorable little white cat. Uh, this is paying homage to Smudge Lord uh, with mm-hmm. Nightwing and Robin. This is Nightwing's tie in to Beast World, which is the current mm-hmm. DC Universe event where. Uh, Small versions of Beast Boy Starro is infecting people, turning them into beast animals. Once yeah. again, Gail Simone, uh, famed writer of Birds of Prey, another thing has been turned into a bear. Per John Scalzi's uh, Grizzly Bear, uh, Grizzly Bear short story, uh, Grizzly Bear Crisis Counselor. Mm-hmm. Please let it also be known if you go to. Uh, Gail Simone's uh, actual Twitter account is like famed comic book writer, definitely not a bear. But still, it's the it, this story it makes was that joke I mean, even better thing. I will say this about this. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, Joe. Before so, I forget my thoughts on this issue. Okay, so this is written by Tom Taylor and art by Sambaseri with mm-hmm. ink and finishing by Vincent. Can't read too small. Vincentini mm-hmm. Sufantinas, we'll go with that. Colors we'll by Adriano that. and Lucas. Uh, they are pretty much running a uh, infected. Someone's running an infected human, infected star human uh, fight ring, and mm-hmm. Nightwing and John break it up because John's back in the books again, and they have to get Robin right. slash Damien, who's become a cat. Which they both find very hilariously fitting. 
But as you were saying, oh no, I, no, keep going because I was like that. That part was like of all the things it the 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 infection turned him into was mis Mr. Mittens. Pretty much, <laughs> Mr. Mittens, the combat kitten. It's still funny, but um, but no. Uh, but no, the, they do actually wind up. It's kind of interesting where you just see, you got you just see Superboy just pull up and say, "We gotta go save Damien." And Superman's like, "We we do you not see what's going on right now?" It's like, "Hey, it's a, it's his brother." All right, he's like, it, "It was almost that." All right, go save go save another go save another Wayne kid. And the thing about it was, I love how Superman wanted to jump in. It's like, no, because we don't know what's going on in this pit. We don't know how this infection will deal with you because if you get infected, we don't got a planet. Nobody is stopping you. <laughs> but um, but ultimately, they did actually uh, did actually did rescue Damien, who feels very remorseful about it all, but still wants to go back and try to save uh, try to save who he can. While Superboy decides to lift up the entire pit and drop it off at Gotham, and in a way only Superman can. But it's a nice, it's a good issue. I really did like it. I had to go back and go read the other parts of the of the beast of the beast uh, of the Beast Wars. Everybody wants to say uh, Beast Wars. Wars. Everybody wants to say Beast Wars. It's it's right there, and I can't. I know. Stop saying it. It's right. It's uh, how is it not? You know what? Let me shut up. I was gonna say, how was that name Beast Wars? Because yes, Hasbro still title. has a license on that. It should have been called Beast Wars, but anyway, I have to go back and go read the other previous issues because it really, well, it really is a good issue, and there are some parts that don't make any sense. But you have to actually go back and read the other issues to see it. But this issue of Nightwing was pretty good. It's okay, Nightwing gets affected in another issue, and he turns into a fox. And all three, of the both Barbara and Starfire, is like, well, that figures. <laughs> I have to go back and read those other issues, but no, Nightwing was good. I also like that he like the uninfected. Him. It's like what I turn into. They both go Fox and goes. He's like, yeah, that figures. Mm -hmm. They were gonna tell him the truth. <laughs> uh, next up, we're jumping around today, guys. So, yeah. So next up, we got Marvel. Uh, we got Daredevil number five. This is written by mm -hmm. Saladin Ahmed, with art by uh, Brid uh, Karami. And Close colors enough. by Jesus uh, Arbatov. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, another thing of Father Matt hanging out in the Marvel Universe, uh, chilling. Uh, She-Hulk is in this book very prominently. Um, basically just doing a food tour with Daredevil. <laughs> Man. Uh, drawn very, very well and got to be very... Was very popular across several Facebook groups and several Twitter groups because of how yep. well she was drawn in this book uh, which you know if you know your character you know how to draw the character and that, that makes the character look great mm -hmm. um, this is just another thing where another person close to Daredevil has been infected by one of the seven deadly sins in this case uh, Gluttony which yeah, is why man. all the eating and Matt and, yeah Matt and Shield got a fight and then Matt's got to exercise so that's the thing about it is, can we now say, because I, I, well, actually, I'm sorry, before we say that, go on, go on and finish the rest of it before I say that. No, I'm, that's pretty much the book. I'm actually really digging this because I like Matt being an exorcist. This is kind of so, fun with I, him being like, yeah, he just has to go around like all of his close friends are, uh, oh. I mean, exorcist. I can't wait for Foggy to show up and be Wrath. <laughs> so I got to ask this question. So is Matt Murdock Constantine now? Well, he doesn't have any magical powers. He's just basically saying our father art in heaven and that yeah, exercise I mean, of the demon. He has like no magical powers. True, but he is doing an exorcism on the seven deadly sins, which you're right. I'm kind of curious to see what Foggy's going to be considering the fact of he's just been released from hell considering the battle with the hand. But that it, it's interesting because I looked at some like, you know what? If this is going to be his born again story, I know it's it's kind of weird that we're talking about born again and yet the new run of Daredevil, Matt is a born is a born again Catholic priest who doesn't remember he went to seminary, who doesn't remember his who uh doesn't remember his training, but remembers going to school, which is interesting. But 
No, I didn't like this because, again, She-Hulk being possessed by Gluttony was interesting, and that Matt performing a on-site exorcism was not on my bingo cards of 2024. But, again, it was a good issue. The other interesting thing is in this book is that She-Hulk remembers who Matt is. At the, the world at large does not know who Matt Murdock is currently. Right, and this is not the first time where like the Hulk seem immune to uh, magical uh, mind erasure things because when Doctor Strange mm -hmm. made the world forget who Spider Man was, Bruce Banner forgot, yeah. but Hulk did not forget. Uh, Hulk was always calling him Peter, and Peter just never realized it until like one was like, "Wait, you call me?" He was like, "Oh yeah, Banner forgot, but Hulk remembers." Right, and she also distributing the same thing. Where I don't know if. I think Jen also probably knows who Matt is because Jen is more attuned with her Hulk than Bruce mm -hmm. is with him. There, she Hulk is just more of her. How do I put this? Jen is the introverted uh, yeah. side, and she Hulk is the extroverted version. There's no yeah. duality in per, in uh, personas. Yeah, it's just one's one side, one's the other side. So uh, Jen is aware of who Matt is, which is very, very important if you think about it in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. No, yeah. You got a fair point. You got a fair point, but no, it was a good issue. I, I did like it. And the fact that Dr. Strange shows up at the end, it's like, uh, we need to talk, sir. I was like, are we going to get a Dr. Strange and Daredevil kind of team up? I'm okay with that. I'm waiting for him to be pride. You think Strange is you? Wait, wait. Who's gonna be Pride? Strange. I can see that. I can see Strange if, being if Pride. not Strange. If not Strange, I don't know if anybody else that would be Pride. In Daredevil's world, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, maybe Bullseye. Uh, I kind of see that more as Wrath. Well, no, Kingpin would be Wrath. Kingpin would be wrath. Bullseye would be envy. Maybe. Anyway, it's going to be interesting, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yep, there it is. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on over. Now, we are not looking at the bad Spider-Man book that is out this week, even though the story is not that bad and sets things up. But, you know, we got to look at one bad book this week. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Jackpot by Celeste Bronfman. Uh, art by Joey Vasquez and Eric uh, Gaster uh, with mm -hmm. colors by Edgar Delgado. All right, so Mary Jane has had these powers for a while now because of goofiness, I think, involving Paul, to where if she can slot machine and get powers based off of this and gets her own superhero persona via mm -hmm. um, Felicia, because Felicia just wanted her to uh, chill after uh, losing her kids. It's like, look, you can go to therapy or you can uh, very aggressively take your frustration out against supervillains. And it's the Marvel Universe, so of course she's going to do the thing. Even though they do actually yeah. go to therapy. And it, the book is there and I think only set up to where we can now have a Black Cat jackpot book in the future, which they've already announced and show in the back of this book. Um, she Hulk surprisingly also in this issue. Uh, mm. she oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. She made her rounds quite a bit in the Marvel Universe uh, this week. She was in the book. She was in Daredevil. She was in White Widow. She was in her own book. She's yeah. in Gang War. A lot of She-Hulk this week. Um, The book is not entirely god-awful. We've read worse. The art is actually very good. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to go and say I couldn't finish it. I, I couldn't. I tried. I tried so much. And and, and this oh, I is tuned out be... on the story and just looked at the yard midway through. Because I, I just, I cannot take Jackpot seriously. Like, maybe it's because of my own bias toward Mary Jane and how she was written in the Spider-Man in the in Spider Man story so far. But it's just like, you made, so she left Peter, found the guy, got kids, loses said kids, then gains powers and calls herself jackpot. I can't take it. I'm sorry. It's like, 
Keep in mind, so she what? is the third jackpot. Yes, but it's just... It, it, I, I, I couldn't finish it. It was that bad Look, to me. I we're on a it. clock right now as it is anyways. Hmm? Look, we're on a clock right now anyways for Paul to turn into a supervillain if uh, all these comic book fan theorists are correct and hmm. Paul's last rem remnant of that actual, like, do the... Due to the start of the series, Paul's just some sort of remnant. It's going to turn yeah. into a villain or something. We don't know. I just, I just couldn't finish it. it. Was that? I mean, to me, it was that bad. I just couldn't finish it. I just can't get over. I just can't get past that. It was either really this or the Spider-Man book with bad art. So I chose the book with the better art. I can see that. If you're doing it on art, I understand. Art was fine. Art was, art was great. It was everything else that was good and terrible. But you're right about the art. It's just moving it's on just, over. I we got. Get... Huh? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm it was sorry. not Go great ahead. to read. No, it's not great to read. Hopefully, the Jed McKay Black Cat and Jackpot book will be much better written. But it's Jed McKay, so I have more trust in him. True. I'm sorry, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, next up, we got Invincible Iron Man number fourteen. This is written by Jerry Dugan with guest star Andre Devin uh, Devito. Coloring by Brian Valencia. Uh, and so this is two parts. We actually see that Emma and Tony finally consummate their marriage. Nice for them. Mm -hmm. Bravo. Bravo. This is actually really focusing on, on Forge and Riri as uh, per the last issue, Riri and Forge uh, were given a vast amount of Mysterium, the mutant metal, that's resistant to magic and the most precious metal in all of the Marvel universe. To go yeah. take to the uh, uh, Asgardian uh, forging realm where the forge dwarves yeah. are. And uh, they run Maybe into we'll... a space dragon of Thing Thing Foom's race who just tells them point plays like, I'm not here to fight you, but you got those rings. I know what they are. Mm -hmm. They will corrupt you. <laughs> and of course, Riri's immediately ready to blast that dragon and thing. And Forge's like, don't piss off the dragon. Right. Of all things in Nevervalier, you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a dragon. Just yes, a giant space dragon in space. This this might want to rethink it. That's all I'm saying. Forge was like, just saying, might want to rethink it. <laughs> But no, uh, it was interesting. I do really. just love things like, how often does this happen to you guys? And Forge is like, do you not know what the X-Men do on a daily basis? That was funny. <laughs> but it was it was interesting, uh, though, the first part, Tony has the reoccurring dream that Magneto kills him with his own armor. That part. He's like, it's, I have the same dream where Magneto takes my armor, forges it into a primitive weapon, and stabs you with it. Uh, Sir, He's like, I've developed countermeasures. I have technology that protects myself, and this man still stabs me. Uh, that sir, that's a night that that's more than a nightmare. That's a scream for help. <laughs> I mean, really and yeah. truly. Just I do like the rest that the rest of the book is just Riri really, really slowly going down the dark path with the mandarins and forge, like, no, don't kill the dwarves. We need them. They make good ships. But the dwarves did turn on them. Try to turn. Oh, yeah. No, the Yorks tried to screw them over. Absolutely. They had that coming, but yeah. don't send them to the Shadow Realm. That was a little extreme, though. I'm not going to lie. The Riri is like, show, should we just get rid of them? No. This is just a little bit of mercy. A little, little bit of mercy. You know, maybe get rid of those we 10 don't rings. Send people to the void. Mm -hmm. That was the yeah, first time I was this like, is a fun book. I like where this is yeah. going. Uh, what did you say, Safari? Get Tony some melatonin. Them, his HMU United has made Ultron. Yep. I mean, in the MCU, you're right. It did lead. It did lead to Ultron. But I mean, when you have the reoccurring nightmare that Magneto kills you, that man lives in your head rent free. That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, I run around with a suit of metal. I mean. No, Victor I mean, I probably doesn't have that problem. He's probably like magically guarded from his abilities. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think Victor has that. I'm about to say Victor doesn't have that problem, but Tony, that's his, that is his, that ain't his Freddy Krueger. <laughs> but overall, it was overall it was a great issue. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, we get X Men number thirty. This is written by Jerry Dugan with art by Phil Noto. Meaning for Joe, it doesn't matter what the story is. It was an automatic buy. Um, mm-hmm. more stuff involving Cyclops, where he has a psychic night with Jean Grey. We'll just go with that. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, let, let's Where leave it like, there. I'll be back in a bit. Gene, mm-hmm. for me, that's just me. That's just me with Gene going. So I was like, yeah, I'll be back in a bit. Mm-hmm. So I uh, am the fire. And then like... Talon and Sync go to as get something back from the High Evolutionary that they turned down initially, but now they want to fight mm-hmm. Orchis and High Evolution is like, no, you got to live through our next encounter. That was the payment. For a uh, little of Sink's blood, like we're square now, you're stealing from me. Yeah, I uh, one of the X Men die, but Sink saves them through bizarre means. Um, good issue. This one kind of just kind of feels like filler. I mean, it does lead to the whole fall of the house of X, rise of the powers of X, but, but kind of that... like it's very, it's like very like fringe connection at the moment. Yeah, but that scene with the high evolutionary and what he did to said person and other said person had to had to resort to drastic measures. Wow. I, I think mean, I said the high, the high evolutionary isn't a threat. It's like, no, he is. Oh, he's a threat. He's a he's a threat with extreme prejudice. I'll leave it at that. I also like that they actually made a barter treaty with the elephant uh, uh, animal man. Oh, yeah. It's just like, okay, yeah, sure, we'll 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 talk it out. Hey, there, hey, there are some animals that did go against the evolutionary. I was expecting to see a rack. I was really expecting to see a raccoon BB, and I'm not gonna lie. I was. I think there was one, like, but it may have been a ring-tailed lemur. Yeah. Possibly. Nope. Good book. Again, continues the X-Men storyline. Again, this does tie into Follow the House of X, but this is like mm-hmm. a very fringe issue that just kind of sets up the story as we go along. The biggest connection is the Cyclops stuff in the front and some of the Starfire stuff where she's like, get me the hell out of here. Oh, yeah. She's ready to bolt. She is, I have never seen oh, yeah, someone she- ready to bolt. She's like, when can I leave? Because they're already suspecting me. <laughs> but overall, we'll kill all you. the mutants, but not you. We like you. <laughs> yeah, that didn't, that didn't, that ain't weird at all. That's concerning. All right, right, so we got new book this week: Cobra Commander, written by Joshua Williamson, with art by Andrea Molina and cards by Annalisa Leone. So, I will preface this. This is part of the um, Cybertronian universe, as you can see the arc crashing right here. Also, I do have to preface this. If you've seen the 86, 87 G.I. Joe movie, you will actually have foreknowledge of what happens in this because they lean very heavily on that origin story from Cobra Commander from the original yeah. old G.I. Joe movie. So, uh, this is before Cobra Commander sets up Cobra. Uh, we see many years ago, he was a scientist, uh, guard, scientist slash guard, of, or maybe a guard of the science cells, were the people of Cobraopolis. Yeah. Or no, Cobra Law. Guys, Cobra we, we got to do with these things. Cobra uh, Law. Cobra Law are trying to overrun a science cell and Cobra Commander who is just a nameless guard at this point it's like, well we're scientists we can rebel these guys mm-hmm. everybody throw your spore bombs and one of the scientists is like, should I throw it now? goes off he recovers we get a cameo from Python we get a, I had to look up who is the like the emperor was because I kept thinking it was some pentors like he comes later. So Pentor comes yeah, later. It's, it's uh, Globulus. Okay, guys. Yeah, Globulus is the name you're looking for. It was so it was don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. It it was it was different because it took me a while. I'm like, y'all are focusing a lot on the origin story they're trying to tell. But at the very end, I'm like, okay, I get it. 
I I get where you're trying to say at this point, and I'm not going to really spoil that part because it does tie into what they're trying to do, but it makes sense as you get toward the end of the issue because a lot of it was like, I was trying to praise you. This was done. This was done for the advancement of Cobra Law. I wasn't trying to be this guy, but now that you said it, now I gotta be him. So it it's it took a while. It was kind of a, it was it started to head toward long storytelling, but I was like, okay, it, it did make sense at the end. Yes, I read this is a very good book. Uh, I will be subscribing probably exclusively to Cobra Commander. Yeah, uh, over okay. Duke. I find that this tale will be a bit more fun, also because I really don't need another rendition of A Team. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see how Cobra gets built. I want to see why he adopts the ruthless coward persona to make to run an organization. Because who he gets his technology and information from mm-hmm. is a very interesting source and yeah. honest to god i would not mind that being in the movie movies going forward now that we have gi joe officially crossing over with transformers and the movies uh circa rise of the beasts yeah i absolutely have no problem saying it's like oh this is where he's been the whole time yeah i can see that because he's playing the long game on this i mean but it does, but it would fit in. It would fit in. I mean, well, you are exactly right. It would fit in post Rise of the Beast. So I wouldn't be against that with whatever. Well, once Hashtro actually does, hopefully, I would say hopefully because the source material is there, but we will see. No, but this was actually really good. I applaud them for rewarding uh, our generation who saw that yeah. 86, 86, 87 movie. And doing a good job of just telling reinventing Cobra Commander uh, for the, this day and age as more a competent leader, but I want to see why he plays the ruthless coward. Right. Makes sense. And then the other top book of the night, because we can't go without saying it. Wonder Woman number five, written by Tom King with art by Dan Semper. And uh, cars by Tom Ed Mori. Uh, if you've seen this picture, this explains why this is just favorite book of the night because all the Wonder Girls are there and Yara Floor is in it. Yeah, Joe likes Yara Floor. <laughs> uh, this was a fantastic book. Pretty much, Wonder Woman gathers all the Wonder Girls and goes, like, I don't want you to be a part of this. We're going to do this by tradition. Everybody pick away. We'll fight. And if I win, you stay out of it. If I lose, you can come win. That Donna picks something different. Yara picks arrows. And uh, Cassie picks arms, which leads to arm wrestling. Pretty much. Meanwhile, Sergeant Steel is gathering Wonder Woman villains. But you gotta love you gotta love how how uh you gotta love how Diana just beats everybody. But the last one was surprising. I'll just leave it at that. The last <laughs> challenge was surprising how she beat her. Cause she had oh, she thought she had her beat. She's like, You've never trained in this. You underestimated a true Amazon. That was your downfall. <laughs> oh. So as I said, we'll we'll go ahead and say what it is because like mm-hmm. so Yara challenges the bow and arrow contest. So they keep firing bow arrows at each other until one of them hits each other. Yeah. Cassie goes with uh uh arm wrestling because arm wrestling. she is given the strength of Zeus by Zeus. Right. So theoretically she is as strong as Diana, but Diana's just a wee bit stronger. Diana challenges her to, like, I guess Injustice 3 because Connor and Damien are in the game as playable characters. That part was funny. And only and for her to turn around and, for her to turn around and say, Well, you never played video games. So how would you be able to do this? Because I studied your friends. And because I studied your friends, I also played this game. And decided no, no, to no, turn it around. was like I've run around with Superman and Batman, and 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like Batman plan Batman plans and has and mm-hmm. has contingencies and whatnot. Meaning right. you're going to try and set up things, whereas Clark Clark will just come in there and punch things. But he holds back. But he holds back. <laughs> but he holds back. He's a, he, yeah, that's what it was. He holds back even though he could destroy you, but he holds back. And she goes, unlike the two of them, if they ever did decide. This is what you say. If they ever did decide to no longer be held by their limitations, they'd be dangerous. But then again, so am I. And makes her rage quit. That was funny. <laughs> the whole rage quitting, thinking you beat Diana, was still funny to me. Um, but yes, the sovereign, the sovereign is basically going around recruiting an army. And of course, all three Wonder Girls are like, "Yeah, we know we swore we wouldn't get into this, but uh, bump that. You need help." Well, as it says here, F oaths, F the gods, mm-hmm. F tournaments. Yeah, they uh, went. They you want to let, let you face this alone? F that too. Yeah, so I got to give it to them. It's like we're not going to let you take on. We're not going to let you take on the sovereign and his army by yourself. So I get that. I of the whole F the whole F the gods, F the oaths. I was like, are we going full on Game of Thrones here? Just straight out oath breaker on all three of them. Yes. This is why Yara is my favorite. But it's cool, though. Even though, even though Diana did beat them all in three contests. But hey, who's counting? But no. Um, it does this does set up for the eventual, this does set up for the eventual meetup uh between the armies. Again, it, it's probably one of the better Wonder Woman runs so far that I like. And definitely the most gorgeous. Like Daniel Samper just he is the gold standard for comic book art over in DC right now. Like yeah. him and Jamal Campbell. Uh, the reason we did not look at Superman tonight, guys, is because I don't care about cowboys. I tried reading it. It's, uh, yeah. It's gorgeous yeah. to look at. It's Royal Witten, but I don't care about uh, Western comics. Also yeah. note that in Diana's apartment, she has a little picture that uh, kid from issue four in the background. Yeah. in her apartment. The one, the Very one, nice. the one boy, the um, one boy was no. out of mascara. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> nope, that's right. We also get a wonderful little thing of uh, John, Damien, and Trinity in the backup story, uh, where, where they are racing <laughs> kangaroos, and Trinity pushes Jumpa Junior a little bit too hard and nearly falls to her doom, and every, the boys are freaking out, and it's like. You're Superman. You're supposed to save her. It's like, but you're Batman. You should have had a plan for this. That was still funny. And then just like, we're both dead. If Di- if Di- if uh, Diana uh, learns, it's like agreed. We none of us speak of this ever again. Yeah, because you know, nobody wants nobody wants to wind up on the other end of an Amazonian blade. No wonder nobody wants to wind up on the other side of an angry Wonder Mom. That too, but no, it was it was a good side story. Yep, that's all the books for the week. Go read right. your Wonder Woman. Go read your Cobra Commanders. Stay all away right. from Jackpot well, or anything that says Gang Warden involving Spider Man. I mean that that is beyond a given at this point. But anyway, uh, but we do also uh, thank you for that, Joe. We do also want to shout out uh, Rick's Comic City. Uh, voted Nashville's number one place for comic books. So if you are in the Tennessee area, definitely check them out. Um, um, at the locations, either in Nashville or Clarksville, Tennessee, or Locker Nerd in Fort Campbell. You can also go to the website at rickscommonsay.com where you can get your uh, trades, hardcover, comic books, gift cards, things of that nature, pull lists. You can definitely look it up from either or. Let them know that we sent you. It doesn't get you any discounts, but at the same time, we want to show love to them because they show love to us. If you're not in the middle of Tennessee area, definitely support your local comic book store. Shop local. I know Barnes and Noble and Amazon are all great places to shop, but comic book stores in your cities need help. They need your patronage. You can find such great things that you may not find anywhere else at a probably better price. So again, support your local comic book stores, support your local libraries. Why? Because they're trying to ban books. Kids, I cannot stress this enough. We want you to read the banned books because there's something in them that they don't want you to know that you really should know. Uh, a lot of books that are great for literature, not just comic books, are great for learning. So as me and Joe sit here, sit here on uh, Get Bit all the time, definitely, guys, 
read the banned books. And of course, if you are in Middle Tennessee area, definitely check out Rick's Comic City. If you're not in Middle Tennessee area, support your local comic book stores, support your local libraries, read the banned books. That is all we ask of you guys because there's such great stuff in there. But um, as we wrap this up, guys, uh, Joey, you think you want to let people know about that you're uh, going to be uh, selling up I for? am still moving forward with content on that new channel, Show Guy Joe. I just mm-hmm. dropped a short. It's about uh, they finally started filming Boom Boonger. Uh, the moon boots are still weird, and the low tiny weirds on the back of the shoulder are super weird. Uh, but you know what? Uh, it hopefully it'll look really nice in motion. Uh, oh, so funny! I'm at least gonna get the morphers for. Both. It's still you uh, show. We show. We uh, show. This I stream a little bit of Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Oh no! This I'm is a sorry, new picture. It. Let me see if I can bring it's it up. New... Oh lord! This is a brand new picture. Let me see if I can not pull it up. Because I'm like, we showed this last week. I think we showed this last week, and I'm still laughing about it. It's 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 just wow. I did not think, from a Power Ranger standpoint, it could get any um um different. But wow, that's about the best way I could put that as wow. Um, but at the same time, I'm not surprised about it. I mean, well, think about it. Well, there's been stranger, there's been stranger Sentai costumes. There's been stranger ones. It's just that one, I'm not gonna lie, no, that's a nightmare fuel. It's just one of those uh I can't find anymore. It was on Twitter. Um it's just one oh, of those no, things not. of now that they are no longer beholden to um, making Super uh, Super Sentai into Power Rangers, they're just going to go as far left field as they can. And I yeah, am there for it. it. But, uh, God, I hope these suits look great in motion because, like, still photos are just like, God, this looks scary. I'm still gonna check out that Garo, but but yes, uh, Show a Guy Joe is where you can find Joe. Um, are you still doing anything on the Twitch side, sir? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I I uh, actually streamed with the Tennessee Ghostbusters doing the Ghostbusters uh, game uh, not too long earlier this week. Uh, once things calm down, I'll probably be able to stream a little bit more. I'll try and stream some of the Yakuza here and there. Nice. I got I to gotta finish the man who erased his name. I have really got to finish that. Okay. So before I uh, – I'm sorry, Joe, you, I'm sorry, Joe, were you done or are you still letting me No, go that on? was it. Okay, just want to make sure. Uh, so before I get to my stuff, shameless plugging, as we usually do here, guys, I do uh, always want to shout out a couple of friends that support the show as well as everybody else. My buddy Yvonne, Big BZA Dot, definitely check him out, Big BZA Dot on social media, and check out his Beats and check out his Beats channel on YouTube. So if you do like beats or need beats for anything entertainment wise or song wise, definitely check him out at Big BZA Dot um, on all social media. And of course, guys, um, myself, where you can find me, Black Fox 447 on all socials. I usually do reviews on everything, including gym stuff, because I do a couple push-ups. Um, at the same time, guys, definitely check out the link at the bottom. Make that a little bit bigger for everybody to see. If you copy and paste that link into your browser, check the link to the YouTube and Facebook groups for all of our podcasts. How the fact we got here, get bitten off this podcast. Definitely check all of those things out. We would certainly appreciate it. We can be found practically everywhere, guys. Um, anywhere podcasts can be seen or heard. Uh, Google Podcasts for the for the time, because I think that's about to go out the window. Uh, but we can be heard on Spotify. We can be eventually heard on Apple Podcasts. We're getting to that point. Just got to get that figured out first. Um, at the same time, guys, you can see us here on YouTube and on Facebook and on Twitch as we are all currently streaming across all platforms. Um, I do want to point out another part that uh, myself, I'm involved with others, basically called uh, Blur Station. What is Blur Station, guys? Blur Station is basically for those of people of color and for blurs and for nerds. It is if you, it has action, it has comics, it has anime, it has so many things there that it's basically becoming a Netflix of itself. But much like Netflix, guys, it is not going to jack up the prices, it is not going to remove and add content it is definitely something for us because if you haven't heard by now tubi is worth a lot of money because a lot of black black creators and uh and poc creators uh 
really made to be what it is. But the problem with that is a lot of those creators don't have access or don't have ownership of their own content. And basically, they made the guy who owned Fox rich. Blur Station is definitely not like that. If you do have content that you want to bring, um, definitely go to the FAQ portion, uh, FAQ portion of Blur Station, and the guys there will definitely get you on that level to where not only can your content can be shown, but at the same time, you get to own it. We won't, and thank you, Tafari, we won't do you like Max did rap shit. If you don't know what I'm talking about, well, don't go on Max looking for rap shit. You're going to be disappointed. But anyway, if you want to join Blur Station, definitely go to the Join Now option that's currently showing there. If you'll do us all a favor and go to Blur's Eye View Affinity Membership, once you click on that, you can select any Affinity Influence partner there. Um, we all would appreciate that. And select the Affinity Membership at $10.99. Yes, $10.99 a month. At $10.99 a month, guys, you can still have access to great content and still be able to eat. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a winner to me. Now, with that Affinity membership, guys, for 36 months of paying $10.99 a month, um, at those 36 months, you have the option of owning a share of Blur Station. Again, you ever want to own a share of, of Amazon, of, of, of Netflix, of things of that nature, without going through E-Trade, without going through Fidelity Investments, and paying an asshole amount of money for simply a simple share of said product? Whereas on Blur Station, you can just pay 36, you can just pay $10.99 a month for 36 months and again have that option. Sounds easier to me. But then again, it is something that's for us content creators. You are more than welcome because at the end of the day, you'll be able to keep ownership of it and get paid. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a winner. But definitely check out blurstation.com. Now, as we are wrapping up, guys, again, uh, we will hopefully be back here next Friday, same Get Bit time, same Get Bit channel, uh, with news, video game news of the week, trailers of the week, our opinions on a lot of things. Um, but above all else, guys, let me say this correctly because Mother Nature is mad. I don't know where you are, but where me and Joe are, it's more ice and snow. Please be careful, guys. Please be careful while you're out there, while you're driving. Um, not only because of the weather, but health as well. Cold and flu season is still strong. Please be careful. That's all we ask. So with that being said, guys, as we've called tonight, uh, Joe, any last words you have for us, sir? As you're muted. No, I'm going to go get more tea. More tea. I More tea sounds great. But anyway. It's only becoming a guayro. I'm more tea than man now. Uh, and then uh, the, unless you start singing, we're all going to start having tears in our eyes. But with that being said, guys, we do thank you all for watching. Play well, back. You will, but for holding the reasons. <laughs> Playback will be next. Playback will be this Saturday, guys. Again, we want your opinions on everything we talked about. Uh, like I said, uh, as we close this, guys, Get Bit is all about fandoms. We love them. We share them. We want to encourage them. Guys, don't be a toxic gatekeeper. Don't simply put down somebody because their fandoms are different than yours or tastes are different than yours. Love them, acknowledge them, share them, talk about them. But don't be a dick about it. That's all we ask. That being said, guys, we are definitely out of here. Take care of yourselves and each other. Hopefully we'll get through all this. We'll see you guys next Friday. Peace. Later.